cancel the Disney attractions. For every awesome Disney attraction, there are Disney experiences, hotels, attractions, and even theme parks that never happen. Cancel the Disney. Did you know Epcot was supposed to get a Russia pavilion? By 1991, Disney revealed the plans for a pavilion based on the nation. The pavilion would include a show in the same style as American Adventure, but much more ambitious, and about Russian history called the Bells of Change. The facade would be this massive recreation of St. Basil's Cathedral. Wait, pause. Is that Joe Rodin? There would also be a more rustic Hamlet. There would also be a dark ride based on a fish. Yes, a fish. Ivan and the Magic Pike. Additionally, there would be restaurants and shops, and even a gallery. The center of this pavilion would house a square, with statues and live entertainment. The pavilion would roughly be located between Germany and China. However, this pavilion would also cause controversy. For you to understand this, we need to go back to the Soviet Union. And I have just the thing, a time machine. How does this work? Well, that's proprietary, but with it, we can go back in time and to another dimensions. So, let's go! This is the Soviet Union during Stalin. This is a horrible, desolate place where anyone that dares to reject the regime, well, gets rejected. Wait! I need to get out of here! Another controversial figure would be Boris Yeltsin. At the time of the pavilion's development, he hadn't done most of stuff that he became infamous for, but later on things would happen. Obviously, a Russia pavilion would be a lot controversial today. Russia would definitely be one of the most ambitious pavilions at Epcot, but it was not meant to be. Now let's move over to Japan, because Japan feels like the pavilion that needs an attraction. For the history of Japan, we need to go back when World Showcase was separate from Future World and located near the Seven Seas Lagoon. All pavilions at the time featured a similar facades but different interiors. Japan would feature many abstract shapes with a bullet train attraction that would take you around Japan. As plans change for Epcot, so did Japan. Plans for a non-mover ride, for instance. Many pavilions were abandoned over time, but Japan still remained, with a version we are more familiar with. Plans included a very special show. Meet the World. Meet the World actually got built, but at Tokyo Disneyland. So, let's go there. Meet the World in our timeline was a show about Japan and its relationships with the world, from China to meeting the Portuguese and to them closing their borders. However, one thing that did cause a lot of controversy was the fact that World War II was glanced over and not directly mentioned, just represented with this cannon. Sure, I think Disney did try their best here, but in the United States, many veterans would not approve of this. Meet the World did not open in 1982. Plans were moved to 1983. So let's see how it would have been at Epcot. First, you could either climb these stairs directly to the second floor, where this huge trapezoid is nowadays, or you could just go via the exhibits and go to the second floor. The exhibits featured companies like Japan Airlines. On the second floor would be Meet the World, a show similar to Carousel of Progress, but the audience was in the middle, for instance. However, Meet the World never happened. Some speculate that it had something to do with the building being built wrong. However, I have no sources on that. Years later, a proposal was made for a Mount Fuji roller coaster. This would be housed inside a recreation of the volcano. It is unclear what the interior of the mountain would probably be, though some claim that Godzilla would be inside. However, the exit would feature an awesome Ginza district, with the roller coaster passing through. The massive size of the project might have contributed to its cancellation. Japan at Epcot still remains attractionless. Meanwhile, at Tokyo Disneyland, Mito Z World would close forever and be replaced by Monsters Inc. Independence Lake. Skiing is a great outdoor activity, so it's no surprise that Disney tried to get their hands onto the world of ski resorts. We had Mineral King, remember that? 
but there was also Independence Lake. Located in California, this beautiful lake looks like a great place for a Disney resort. Disney's Independence Lake project was announced in July of 1974. The land around the lake was jointly owned by the Southern Pacific Railroad and the United States government. The mountains surrounding Independence Lake offer a wide range of winter sport opportunities with many slopes. It was expected to open by 1979. In 1977, the master plan was revealed. It showcased an alpine village with shops and restaurants and even campgrounds and lodges. At the time opening was pushed back, in spring of 1978, Disney shut down all plans for the era, due to increasing issues with the government, excessive bureaucracy and formalities. In an alternate universe, Independence Lake is a thriving resort with awesome snacks. There's also one thing I forgot to mention to you guys. And that is, I can't come close to another alternate version of myself, at least according to Dr. Seeker. Disneyland just renovated their Toontown, but did you know Disney's MGM Studios was supposed to get a Toontown based on Roger Rabbit? Located near Sunset Boulevard, it even featured a red car trolley. There was a Baby Herman's Runaway Buggy Ride. Toontown Transit offers a wild, wacky ride through the cartoon world of Toontown. It would be similar to Star Tours or Sea Rider at Tokyo Disney Sea, for instance. The ride would take place inside a Toon version of Union Station. Part of this plan did come true with Sunset Boulevard. Unfortunately, no red car trolley. Tomorrowland at the Magic Kingdom was supposed to become Discoveryland. One of these projects included Alien Encounter and From Time to Time, the Timekeeper. This did happen in some form, but Disney actually planned much more ambitious plans for the Carousel of Progress, for instance, which was supposed to be replaced with flying saucers. This would probably not have worked out, so it's a good thing that it didn't happen. You can see in this scale model of the project, special thanks to Retro WDW, while some plans went forward, some were forgotten. Tomorrowland would be redone in 1995 and include a new design that is currently being being redone again for Tron. Let's go to a universe where this was built. Guys, we have a problem. That's me. Wait, who are you? I am you. How can you be me? I am I. You are you. I am me. What? I'm a version of you from another dimension. Why are you here? I came here to see Discovery Land at the Magic Kingdom. Ah, you mean Six Flags Magic Kingdom. Wait, what? Did you know Disneyland was supposed to get Discovery Bay? This would be the beyond Big Thunder of that time, with an attraction based on an island at the top of the world, for instance. It would roughly be located where Galaxy's Edge and the old Big Thunder Ranch was located. Why not let the man behind this, Tony Baxter, tell it to you? Discovery Bay is kind of a once-only place in time. It's a Victorian uh, place that occurred at the turn of the century. It's the kind of place that Jules Verne or H.G. Wells might have inhabited. So you'll actually be able to, for instance, board the Nautilus and have a very elegant meal down below the water while you're being serenaded on the pipe organ and looking out at all the uh, scenic wonders of the ocean floor from those overhead windows. This is just one of the adventures that might go into here. There's, uh, like I said, a flight on an aerial suspended monorail system that looks like a dirigible and a time machine. So that's one of our key excitements for the future. Additionally, there would be Professor Marvel's gallery, a predecessor to Journey into Imagination Future, a very familiar looking dragon, and this balloon ride as well. Other concepts are shows a roller coaster with a spiraling lift tail and a fireworks factory. This is where we also have the backstory for Jason Chandler, a sea member later on. As Tony said, this project included more than just Discovery Bay. There was also Dumbo Circus Land, and there was supposed to be a Mickey Mouse ride, very familiar, right? Called Mickey's Madhouse, focusing on the history of the rodent himself, and the circus at Disney's Travagensa with various Disney characters. Additionally, there will also be something based on Pinocchio. In an alternate universe, Discovery Bay is a popular land. Unfortunately, the food is not that good unless you like eating turtle inside the Nautilus restaurant. Hey Disney, in the future maybe you could turn Paradise Pier or Pixar Pier onto Discovery Bay just staying since it's located
located in California. Unfortunately, Discovery Bay was too ambitious. Instead, Disney went with projects like Splash Mountain and the New Fantasyland. Recently, many Disney fans were angry that Disney announced projects like Encanto Coco that are way into the future, but even back in the days, Disney announced stuff way before it happened, like Critter Country or... We have the New Orleans Square and Bear Country area and there's a lot of property out behind that and we're thinking about unifying that so that we have maybe a Dixieland and strengthening that with maybe a, we have a great property both in music and uh, characters called Song of the South. Lastly, Disneyland Paris or Aero Disney back then was supposed to have a value hotel based on Americana. According to Arquitetonica who designed value hotels at Walt Disney World, while we don't have much, it is interesting to say the least. Would this have worked at Disneyland Paris? Well, let me know. Since you are here, why don't you check out the future of Disneyland Paris by clicking this video on the screen. It seems as if seeing a different version of me doesn't bring any problems like Dr. Seeker said. Oh, what happened?